Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for Thursday, 7th of May. Recording today's video 6.15pm Eastern Standard Time on the 7th Eastern Time. For Thursday, I was expecting upward movement. That's exactly what we've got. I'm expecting overall upward movement is going to continue for another week or so. And I won't look for it to be over until that pink 1-3 trend line of the diagonal is overshot on the daily chart nice and clear. When that's done, I'll be looking for a trend change at primary or cycle degree for a big correction or possibly for the bear count a huge market crash, but we're not there yet. Let's have a look at the weekly chart. I'm taking a step back and looking at all of primary three, the bull wave count from the credit crunch at 666.79 from that low, seeing this upward movement as 123 at primary degree for a cycle degree fifth wave for a bull market. The bear wave count sees the upward movement as primary ABC for a big zigzag for a cycle degree B wave within a larger bear market. When zigzags unfold, the subdivisions of 535 exactly the same as 123 subdivides 535. So the subdivisions for bull and bear wave counts are identical. The wave counts do not diverge and they won't diverge for months yet. So I'm just going over the bull count at weekly and daily charts. Primary 3 begins here. So it has 1, 2, an extended third wave, 4, and a final fifth wave nearing completion. Within intermediate wave 3, we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. The subdivisions are absolutely perfect. It's extremely close to 2.618, the length of intermediate wave 1, and it includes the strongest upward momentum at the weekly chart level. So I'm really confident this is where the third wave ends, and so this is where the fourth wave ends and the fifth wave begins. For the final fifth wave, I'm now pretty confident about my labelling here. 1, 2, 3 has a ratio of 1.618 to 1. The subdivisions at the daily chart level all fit absolutely perfectly. And 4 does not overlap wave 1 price territory. And there's some very nice alternation between 2 and 4 here. So this is where 4 ends and this is where 5 begins. At the weekly chart level, draw a trend channel using Elliott's technique around primary wave 3 from 1 to 3 and then a copy on 2. I'll be expecting the final fifth wave to end midway within that channel. That's pretty common for the S&P. Draw also this double aqua trend line. This is drawn here using a classic technical analysis approach as outlined by McGee in that classic technical analysis of stock trends. I've drawn it from the first two swing lows at these price points detailed here. And then I've created a parallel copy and pushed it up to sit on this low here. This lower trend line has its first anchor back in November 2011. It's reasonably shallow, it's repeatedly tested, so it's highly technically significant. It recently beautifully showed us where this fourth wave correction ended as we expected. So while price remains above the lower of the double aqua trend lines, the bull market remains intact. Only when this lower trend line is breached by a close of 3% or more of market value, would I consider that the bull market is being interrupted by a big correction? At this stage, primary 3 would reach 1.618, the length of primary 1 at 2190, but I think that target's actually too high. At the daily chart level, I would rather use this pink 1-3 trend line to show where upward movement is coming to an end. At the weekly chart level, there's quadruple negative divergence as MACD trends lower, price trends higher. That supports the idea of a big correction coming up sometime soon. Let's have a look at this final fifth wave where it begins here, this point here. The traditional technical analysis equivalent for this structure is a rising wedge. It's a terminal structure. This is an Elliott wave ending contracting diagonal. For an ending diagonal, all of the subwaves must be zigzags and the fourth wave must overlap first wave price territory. To show it's a diagonal, the convention in Elliott Wave is to keep drawing the trend lines for the diagonal. There's another good reason for that. Diagonals normally adhere quite well to their trend lines. We've got some small overshoots here. That's acceptable. I would not expect a proper breach until we get to the final fifth wave. So we have a zigzag for one. 
a zigzag for two, a zigzag for three, and a zigzag for four now extremely likely to be over. The only atypical thing about this Elliott wave diagonal is that two and four are more shallow than second and fourth waves within diagonals usually are. They're usually between 0.66 to 0.81, the prior actionary wave. These ones are much more shallow. In this case, I think they've been forced to be more shallow by the very strong support offered by this long-held aqua blue trend line. The final fifth wave must be a zigzag, and this diagonal is contracting, so it can't be longer than equality with the third wave, and a third wave may never be the shortest. To meet that core Elliott wave rule, I'm not expecting movement above 2212.95. That's where this fifth wave would reach equality in length with the third wave. I won't be looking for the fifth wave to end until it overshoots this 1-3 trend line for a contracting diagonal. That's the most common place for the final fifth wave to end. I'm reasonably confident today that this fourth wave zigzag is over here because it's finding support beautifully again at this aqua blue trend line. But if it does continue further, and that is technically possible, if it does move lower, it can't be longer than a quality in length with the second wave below 2013.27. The rule for the end of a fourth wave of a diagonal is it should overlap first wave price territory. This one does. It can't move beyond the end of the second wave below 1980.90. We have double negative divergence at the daily chart level between MACD and price again, supporting the idea of an upcoming trend change for a big correction. Let's have a look at this idea at the hourly chart level where 4 is a slow here. 5 must be a zigzag subdividing 535. The first 5 up is incomplete. At 2101, submenuet 5 will reach equality in length with submenuet 1. That could complete Minuet wave A. When A is a completed five wave structure, then I'll be looking for B to move price lower and show up at the daily chart level. It should last one to three days, giving us one to three red candlesticks or doji. That's because I expect minute wave five zigzag at the daily chart level to have a really clear, obvious three wave look. That will give the wave count the right look. Minuet B may not move beyond the start of A, below 2067.93, but if it gets down that low, I'd expect it to find pretty strong support at the lower edge of the diagonal trend line, because diagonals normally adhere very well to their trend lines. Only the fifth wave I am expecting a comfortable overshoot. The B wave can slightly overshoot this trend line, but I wouldn't expect this line to be breached. On the way up, once we get a new high above 2120.95, I'll have confidence that the final fifth wave up is underway, that we're going to see new all-time highs for the S&P. That eliminates the possibility that Minuet Wave C could continue, because it's the start of Minuet C. A new high above this point could not be a second wave correction within Minuet C, and so this C wave down here would then have to be over, which means the whole correction, the zigzag for Minute 4, would have to be over. But today I'm confident enough that my Newt 4 is over and my Newt 5 is underway, confident enough to move the invalidation point up to the start of my Newt 5 at 2067.93. So overall for the S&P, for at least another week, maybe a little bit longer, I'm expecting overall upward movement with a continued decline in upward momentum and along the way up I'm looking out for a correction against the trend to last one to three days for a B wave. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that all our members are having a fabulous day.